Hello again. Welcome to the next video in a series on programming and assembly language on the Atari 8-bit computer using the Mac 65 assembler editor cartridge. Uh, like all the other videos in this series, this video assumes you watched the one that came before it because they all sort of build on the uh, previous ones. So uh, the topics I want to cover tonight are uh, we're going to take one more uh, way of skinning the cat on reading the joystick because it shows an important, uh, another important way uh, that will become useful to us in the future and in other operations, and that is using the uh, uh, instruction uh, logical and. And uh, we're also going to go from there to talk about how to do variables in assembly language and some of the different ways you can do that. Um, first, a few administrative sort of things. Um, GitHub updates. So um, they take me some time. So after a video, when I say this code will be up on GitHub, um, it could take up to a week, depending on what else I'm doing. So eventually it will get there, but don't expect it to be there like in a half hour after this video goes live on YouTube. It won't, it won't be there yet. Um, and in the last video, you saw me make a programming mistake and have to stop and debug it. And you may be asking, why, why doesn't this guy know how to use an editor? Or why is he just typing live? That goes back to my first uh, uh, series with the action language. And it's just a thing that I feel like um, it's important to do as much live on the fly because it's okay uh, if I make mistakes and it's okay if you make mistakes. And I just feel like, hey, if you see somebody else making mistakes, this guy's a professional programmer for 40 years and he makes a mistake and it happens to all of us. So I just feel like that's more real, right? Like if I'm making mistakes, then the next time that you forget to put two spaces in front of an ins uh, assembly instruction or you put two spaces in front of a label and then your program crashes or whatever, or doesn't do things the way you think it should be doing it, um, you're not alone. Everybody does it, including me, and you'll see some of these in these videos. So that's just the way I want to do things is keep it live and keep it real and let you know. Um, I'm as fallible as anybody else and don't beat yourself up when you mis make mistakes when you're learning. So, and the last thing I want to talk about is I, up until now, I've been using this Mac 65 cartridge, which has 1.1 on it. And I got that off of, uh, Mercari, I think, but somebody on Facebook was looking for, um, an, uh, you know, a Mac 65 cartridge that they could buy, uh, you know, a physical cartridge, not a download copy. And uh, I went to look for that cartridge uh, and I couldn't find it anywhere. I couldn't find it on Macari. I couldn't find it on Etsy. I couldn't find it on eBay. Uh, but the one I could find is uh, this one. This one's on eBay right now for 40 bucks, and when you consider it, you get Basic XL, Basic XE, Action, and Mac 65 all in the same cartridge for 40 bucks. Um, uh, that's a great buy, I think. I don't know, it's like five bucks shipping, something like that. But anyway, that's a great buy. I hadn't been using this because I like to have my Action cartridge, and while I had two Mac 65 cartridges, this is only Action cartridge I had. How you control what it is is, I don't know if you can see it because of the lighting, but there's two jumpers on the back of this cartridge. And with both of them in, it's a Mac 65 cartridge. If I pull the bottom jumper out, uh, then it's an action cartridge. And if you pull the 
top jumper out or if you pull them out you're gonna get one of these basics i don't know i've never used either of them so i just use action and max 65 and i didn't want to have to keep swinging with the uh jumpers to go back and forth between action and max 65 and then i realized you know with this video series i'm not going to be going back to action for a while and if i do i'll just pull out the jumper so we're going to start using this one now which So you can see this one is version 3.6 from 1988. As far as I know, um, you know, I haven't really, there was one small difference I saw between this and the 1.1, and that was really only because it was using Spartados 1.1. I think it's more a Spartados 1.1 thing than a Mac 65 version thing. So I'm not even going to bother talking about it. But otherwise, I haven't seen any real difference between this 3.6 and the 1.1 that I was using. Uh, everything still works the same. So going forward, we're going to be using this. But if you're using the 1.1 or the 1.2, you'll be okay. I'm not going to be doing anything that requires 3.6. It's just if I'm going to be using... Uh, the most common denominator, like a Atari 800 physical computer and a physical cartridge. I want to use the physical cartridge that everybody can get their hands on. So that's where we're at. All right. So we're going to go back uh, to the, what I call, I guess, the Atari <laughs> basic version of this uh, routine to read the joystick. <laughs> Well, I do like this about 3.6. It seems to put it in full 40 column mode without me having to do anything. I do like that. So, And I'm not going to totally review these programs again. I've done it enough. But uh, I do want to, sh there's one thing I want to show you in here that's going to lead up to the next part of the series. So uh, we load the accumulator with the value of whatever stick zero is at the moment, and then we do the compare of the three upward positions and the compare of the three downward positions. And uh, we're going to go into, uh, we're going to assemble that. So it's in memory. We're going to go into DDT. And go to 5024. And when I go to execute that first instruction by pressing the option key, if I haven't been mentioning that, I'm going to push down on the joystick so that, uh, well, I guess I push down into the, down into the, down into the left, right? So I got a nine here. So it's a down, one of the down positions. Uh, so, you can see I loaded the accumulator with the value of 9. That's uh, the reading from stick 0. And then I'm going to compare it to 14. And it's not equal to 14, so then I'm going to compare it to 10. It's not equal to 10, so it's going to compare it to 6. And then... Uh, finally, it's going to compare it to 9, so... Uh, up until now, the zero flag has been zero. But when I do this comparison, if you remember, if I compare two things and they're exactly identical, the difference between them is zero. That sets the zero flag, and branch on equal is the same as branch on zero. So always try to remember that branch on equal means branch on the zero flag being set. But the main key I'm walking through this is to show you this. If I did four or five comparisons, this value in the accumulator never changed. So I'm, this logic I'm doing is non-destructive to the value I got when I read the joystick up above. So this value stayed nine the whole time. And now it's gonna, if you see, 
9 equals 9, so the difference between them is 0, so the 0 flag went up. So now this branch equal means branch on 0, so I expect this to jump to 504F. And that's where I go, right? Okay. And you, uh, again, uh, maybe I didn't mention this on DDT, so I will mention it again. Option key moves you through your commands one at a time. Select key uh, jumps you into the, uh, uh, back to the screen display in case you're doing something on the screen. And Q will quit. So now we're going to uh, load so this is a version that we changed instead of doing all those compares we'd still do the load the accumulator with the value that's in stick zero we do a logical shift right to get the bit on the end to fall into the carry flag and then if a zero fell into that carry flag then we would branch to stick up but if a one fell into that carry flag we go down here we shift the bit off the end again to see if it was clear if it was not, then we go here to stick center. Otherwise, we'd go down here to stick down. So, again, we're going to assemble this. Go to DDT. Go to the start of our program. And, again, I will be pushing down on the stick, trying to do it straight down this time. Let's see. Did I do better? Yes. <laughs> 13. <laughs> straight down. Good. What that means is, uh, and, we'll, and we'll look at this closer outside of DDT in a minute, but it means the 8-bit is set, the 4-bit is set, the 2-bit's clear, and the 1-bit is set. So 8, 4, and 1 is 12, 13. So a 13 is there. Now, since there's a one at the end here, when I do this logical shift right, the one's going to drop off and into the carry bed. So that one dropped off the end and into the carry bed. So this says branch of carry clear. It's not clear, so it's going to go down to the uh, logical shift right. And again, uh, it's going to look at this, which is now... Uh, has a six here, which is a zero, but a zero bit in the eight, one in the four, one in the two, one in the zero. So now, when I do logical shift right, that zero on the end is going to fall into the carry flag, and that's going to say branch on carry clear. It's going to jump down and do some stuff. But here's the thing to point out: when we originally loaded the accumulator, it was uh. 13. But after doing these logical shifts, there's a 3 in there now. The original 13 that I had is gone, and he can't get it back. So this is more like a destructive sort of logic, right? I'm taking the original value, and I'm ripping bits off of it. I'm pulling it apart, and when I'm done, I don't have the same thing that I started with. And in this case, it's okay because I'm just looking at the bits one by one. But the next method that we're going to use, that's not going to work, and I will show you why. But before we do that, we have to talk about logical and. So, uh, all right, we'll do it this way. All right, very good. All right, so. When I pushed down on the joystick before, uh, and again, we'll go back to these bit patterns here, right? 1101. Uh, so the top, uh, top bits are always zero. And then I had 1101. Those are the bits in the uh, 
uh, joy in the accumulator when I pushed down on the joystick and I load the accumulator with the value that was in joystick. There is a, and let's go back here. So that's the what's in the accumulator from uh, joystick zero. Now, there's a command called uh, and. And what it does is it takes a, a pattern of bits and it compares the, and you can either do it in immediate mode, which means I'm going to supply the pattern of bits. I'll tell you what the pattern of bits are. Or you could grab it from a memory location using some of those memory addressing uh, mnemonics that we used before. But you're going to get an 8-bit number that is going to go here, and you're going to compare that 8-bit number to the number that's in the accumulator. And how it works is like this. As an example. How it works is like this. I compare these numbers uh, bit by bit, and if either of the either of the bits in these two numbers, sorry, if either of the bits in these two numbers is zero, the result's going to be a zero. So this is going to be a zero. That's going to be a zero. That's going to be a zero. This has a zero in one of the two positions. That's going to be a zero. This one has a 1 in both positions, so that's going to be a 1. And then this one has a, a, a 0 in one of the positions, and this has a 0 in one of the positions. So when I did the AND of this, which is 13, with the AND of this, then I'm going to get... Uh, Now, the numbers don't really matter. <laughs> I'm just showing you what the numbers would be if we're looking at it in DDT. The important part of it is that I want to, uh, what we use this AND for is to get to certain bits that we want to analyze, whether they're up or down. So like it, in our example, before, when we're doing the right shift and left shift, we're always dropping this bit off the end into the carry flag. When we're checking up and down, I only care about these two bits. But if I was checking if the joystick was pressed right or left, and I wanted to use that method we were using of rotating, then to find out if the stick was being pushed to the left, I have to do three rotates. And if I want to find out if it's pushed to the left, I have to do four rotates to get to this bit, or four logical shift rights to get to this bit. Sometimes I just want to know what's in that bit, right? Because your computer, even a uh, uh, stock 800, a regular 800 like I have here with 64K in it, has over half a million of these bits. And sometimes what matters about making your program work is one bit out of those half a million. <laughs> so you wanna know what the value of that one half a million is. So what we do is we use this as a mask and we put zeros in everything except the bit that we want to know about particularly. So if I did this, obviously that's going to be zero. But let's say I wanted to know if the first bit was turned on or, and this will be zero. And I'm just going to get rid of these because it doesn't matter and I don't want to confuse things. So let's say I want to know, instead of doing the logical shift right or rotate right, if I want to know if this first bit is a zero, I put a one there. 
And then I look at the result. If the first bit is a one, and I put a one here, and then when I do this and, this is a flag uh, bit is going to be set, uh, a.k.a., you know, uh, not equal to zero, not zero. So I know that this flag uh, does not have a zero in it, so it's not the one I'm looking for. If the, and remember on the joystick at least, you can't have up and down at the same time. But if I had this and I said, hey, uh, now this is going to be a zero, right? So if I want to figure out if this bit is zero or one, I just do an and with just that bit set. All the other bits I want to turn off because the only bit I care about is this one. And if the result is zero, then, hey, that I know that bit is a zero. If the result is anything other than the one, I know that bit was a one. So uh, let's say I wanted to, this would test if the uh, joystick was being pushed up. What if the joystick was being pushed down? Right? If the joystick was being pushed down and I did it with and, then this would come out one and I would say, hey, not equal to zero. So I know that the joystick is not being pushed up. So then I could check it with uh, this bit set. And now this one is gonna turn zero. And this one is going to turn zero equals zero. So I know, hey, I set the second bit. It was the only bit I set, and I still got zero on this. So that bit must be clear. And I'm going to show you how this works in the, in the program in a minute. So, and again, maybe if I'm just checking uh, uh, left and right, you know, the rotates are okay. I'm only doing two bits. But let's say I wanted to see if they were pushing the joystick right. In that case, this is a zero. These all could be ones. And then I could test these bits one by one using and. So I would say, okay, I'm going to and it with uh, one. Now that's going to come out uh, not equal to zero, right? Then I could say, okay, I'm going to test it with two. So that's not going to be, uh, that's, right, that's not equal to zero. I could test it with four. Not equal to zero. And then finally, I'd test it with eight. And now, zero and one, all these are zeros. Now this equals zero. So I know that this bit is clear. That means the joystick's being pushed, uh, pushed to the right. I just get this mixed up because these bits are backwards. The one on the right is for pushing to the left, and the one on the left is for pushing to the right. Thank you, Atari. Love it. So, <laughs> all right. How does this look in the program? So we're going to make some changes to this program. And let's get rid of these so I don't get some crazy uh, thing. So instead of using these rotates right and left, we're going to start using uh, uh, the AND command. So... So we're going to load the accumulator with uh, the value that's in stick zero. And then I'm going to do an and with the value of one. I remember when I was showing that before, if I and it with one, then in, and instead of using, uh, and hit there, instead of using branch on carry, uh, carry clear, now we're branching on the zero flag. 
So when the whole thing turns zero, which means if I if I used a one and I compared it to the whatever number was in the accumulator and I got back a zero, which is, remember, equal, set the zero flag, then I would branch to stick up. And then I could check and branch to stick down. Now, this time, I'm making a mistake, but I'm making a mistake on purpose, so... <laughs> because I want to make a point. <laughs> so, again, now, instead of rolling the bits off, we're going to do the uh, and. And we're going to assemble this. And we're going to DDT, and we're going to 5024. We're going to load the accumulator. This time, just for the sake, uh, I'm going to push up on the joystick. So what's in the accumulator is 10, which means the... Uh, eight bit is set. That means I was pushing uh, up and left instead of straight up. So uh, because the if, uh, on uh, let's say I'm just going to use these as a bit. So ten means the eight bit is set and the two bit is set, and this bit is zero and this bit is zero, which means I was pushing up and I was pushing left. So right now there is a zero here. So when I do the and with the one. I'm going to be doing zero, 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 one, and when I do the one and the zero, that's going to set this zero flag. The whole accumulator is going to turn zero. The zero flag gets set, and when I do branch on equal, that means branch on zero flag, then it's going to jump to stick up. So you see it put the accumulator to zero, and then it branches to stick up. But there's a problem with this as it is now, which is this. Let's say I push the stick down, or as best I can. All right, so it's, again, this is nine. So it's, uh, these are zeros, that's the eight, and that's the one. So it's this bit is zero, this bit zero, this is one, and this is one, uh, which is nine, all right? One, eight and one is nine. That's what's in the accumulator right now. So now I'm going to, uh, when I end it with zero, 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 one, so there's going to be a one in, in the accumulator, and there's going to be one in there. So this is going to turn into the value of one, which is not zero, which means the zero flag won't be set, which means this branch on equal won't jump. It's going to go to the next and. So we we'll do this and, and you see, oh, I got the one. It did not set the zero flag. It, it, this says branch of zero flag, right? Branch of equal. It's not going to do that. It's going to go to and. But here's where our problem is. So remember I said before, we have like non-destructive ways where we read the uh, value of stick zero into the accumulator. And then we do a bunch of comparisons, but we don't change the uh, value in the accumulator. Well, in this case, uh, the and operation itself says take the result of anding that number with the value in the accumulator and put it back in the accumulator. What that means is you lost your original number that you got from uh, the uh, loading the joystick. Now one way you could get around that is Uh, 
oh, okay, if I did this and I wrecked up the, what was, uh, came out of stick zero, I wrecked it up by changing the value in the accumulator, I'll just get the value of stick zero again and compare it. But that's not a good way because uh, what if somebody, you know, was so fast they could change the joystick while it's going through here. And so what if it was up here, you know, or down here, but by the time it loaded it back in, the stick was pointing up, then you would have had the stick down and up and it wouldn't have done nothing. So we can't do it that way. So what we want to do is this is where we need to have a variable. So what we can do is is before we, so we load the value of stick zero into the accumulator. And before we actually do the and, which is gonna destroy the value of the accumulator, we're gonna uh, store the accumulator value in some variable that I'm just gonna call stick position. And we're gonna uh, talk about how that variable comes to be. In a minute, I just want to show you the logic here. So now I can do this and, I can do this stick up. And instead of loading the accumulator from stick zero, I can load it from stick position because even though I changed the value in the accumulator, I didn't change the value in stick position that I, so I get this, I store it in a variable, I do the and, I get it back out of the variable, I do the and, and then if I was doing left and right, I could also get it out of there. So how do I actually create a variable in assembly language? There's a few different ways of which I am about to show you a few. Uh, the first thing I want to note, though, is when you create variables in basic or when you create variables in action, if you saw those videos I had, you declare a variable and... <clears throat> basic or action. Sorry, need a drink there. Basic or action takes care of figuring out where that variable is going to go, allocating some memory in in uh, in the computer to store your variable. You don't have that luxury in assembly language. Any variables you use you got to figure out where they're going to go. You got to take care of everything yourself in assembly language. Now, these are kind of like variables, these system equates, right? Because stick zero can change and uh, trigger can change depending on if the trigger is not. The address of screen memory, I can point screen memory to a new place and stick it in here if I want. So these are kind of like variables but these are well-defined and they do certain things in the computer, they're, you know, system variables. I, what I'm talking about now is like your program variables. And I think what I, my uh, initial take on program style for assembler is to have system equates on top, uh, hard-coded data, here, and what I mean by that is, here's some strings. I may have some redefined characters here. I may have some display list, a custom display list here. So I'm calling this stuff uh, data, right? And then variables, let's see. So there's, uh, There's a new directive which I'm going to tell you. Uh, so, first thing you do is make your variable name a label. Then there's a, a new uh, compiler directive that I'm going to tell you about called dot ds, which stands for I don't know if you want to call it data storage or a data space or whatever. But the idea is you're telling the compiler that when it uh, compiles and assembles your program, 
in between this data I have here and the start of my program, I want you to reserve one memory location in there, which I'm going to use to store my variable in. There's another way you can do this by doing this and saying just uh, this always says where am I currently assembling at. You can always uh, do this. Um, Right, this almost does the same thing, or and not almost, it does do the same thing. It says, take where you're assembling and jump over a byte. But I really like this as much cleaner, and this is the one I really like you to use. Data storage or data space, whatever you want to call it. And again, let me make sure I, because that's like my worst thing is I'll type something over and then I forget to actually make sure it's in there. So let's do this list. All right, so we have our system defines here. Here's our system variables, if you want to call them that. Here's our program data. Here is our first uh, variable, stick position. So what's going to happen is, and, and let's just, this, uh, well, first, let's save it. Then we're going to... Uh, because I don't trust myself. We're just gonna do a test assemble first. Make sure we get a clean compile. All right, so that was good, so. to go to memory so now there's some things I want you to look at here so this is our our as it's assembling it starts at 5,000 right it uses 12 bytes 12 bytes 12 bytes and our program used to start, remember, our program started at 5024, but now I've reserved this space at uh, 5024 to hold my stick position variable. And now at 5025 is program start. So everything gets uh, changed by one. The other thing that I want to show you is here is the... Uh, load accumulator with stick zero, right? Which is AD is the, this is the instruction and this is the stick position, right? 20, uh, 278, low byte, high byte. And then I'm gonna store this, at, store the accumulator at stick position, which is now 5024. And if I look here, here's the instruction and here's where I'm storing that accumulator value 5024 that's where it's going to go and then this is the and instruction and if this is the immediate value of one this is the branch on equal and then i load the accumulator now instead of loading it from stick position at 278 it's going to load it from our variable and then do the and with two and so forth And as I said before, 
Uh, right now, our program starts at 5025, not 5024. So when we go to DDT, we're going to go to 5025 for the start of our program. We're going to push uh, down on the stick. <laughs> hey, I got it that time. <laughs> 13, all right? So 13 is there's eight, four, and one. So this bit is set, this bit is set, this bit is set. So I'm going to store 13 at memory location 5024. And then I'm going to come back to 502B, but I can look at... If I look at 5024, you can see that 13 is sitting in that location now. So that's my new uh, variable right there. Let's go back to 502B. All right, so I've got a... 13 in the accumulator, I and it with 1, because the 1-bit is set, the uh, 0 flag is not going to get set, because it's going to be a 1 here. So the 0 flag didn't get set. And the accumulator has a value of 1. But now I go to my, uh, my variable, and... I'm going to overwrite that one with the 13 that I started with, 8, 4, 1. So now this bit is 0, so when I end it with 2, it's going to be 1 and 0. This thing is going to be, accumulator is going to have 0, the 0 flag is going to go up, and this is going to um, uh, evaluate the true And we load the X with 23, right? And we start writing stick down. So that's uh, how that works. Let's just... And the one problem with using that decrement X, decrement Y, is that it starts at 12 and goes back to 1, not to 0, so it doesn't wipe out that first character there. I would fix that if I wasn't just... And, of course, since this is part of OS 1.1, that won't jump back like I want it to. All right, now I'm going to show you some other... Now, uh, data space one. If I wanted to stick a full two-byte memory address and store it someplace, I could make this data space two, right? So in, uh, in uh, action, this is a byte variable. DS2 would be a card variable, right? If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. It's just either a one-space... Uh, a one byte variable or a two byte variable or how many bytes you want it to be. But again, I am going to show you some uh, tricks now. <laughs> Woo, tricks. <laughs> All right, so here is where I'm Storing it at this variable I created, and because it's at 5024, right, it's a two-byte address, this instruction takes up three bytes of memory, uh, the instruction plus the two-byte address. And when I load it back out of the variable into the accumulator, 
Again, it takes three bytes, one for the uh, load accumulator and then two bytes for the address. There's a special place in, uh, a special place uh, in your Atari's memory, which is called page zero. And that is the first 255 bytes of memory are called page zero. And the reason they're called page zero is you don't need to have two bytes to get to the addresses there. You only need one byte. So like when we have, so here, right, uh, screen memory is in page, the address of screen memory is in page zero, and I only need one byte to, um, uh, one byte to get to that address. Now, uh, can I use that in a program? You have to be super careful because um, it turns out that uh, because using one byte instead of two bytes to get to an address is uh, uh, super handy, right? Your computer operating system and everything the computer does really uses up a ton of page zero. It leaves a few bytes in the top half of page zero. However, uh, in basic, then the top half of those uh, uh, bytes in page zero are used by the basic cartridge. If you're using Atari's assembler editor cartridge, the top half of those bit, uh, bytes are used by Atari assembler. And uh, then there was also uh, Mac 65 uses them all like a big hog as well, just like you use half of page six. However, if you want to poke around and you feel like being adventurous or dangerous, you can look in the Atari, uh, mapping the Atari for like memory locations like 3F, which is the cassette end of file flag. If there's a zero there, then there's an end of file on a cassette uh, uh, when you're reading cassette. Now, unless you're planning on, uh, you know, programming in assembly with the cassette recorder, uh, then don't do this example. But <laughs> uh, there's a good chance, like, the computer is never going to touch this, and certainly not in the uh, time that we're going to use it. So we're actually going to say, hey, just like we used... Uh, uh, just like we used uh, um, a one-byte address for screen memory here, we're just going to say, hey, stick position equals... Oops. Three F, right? There's another new uh, directive I want to tell you about, which is the same as this... Uh, This stands for equate, so, or, yeah, equate 3F to stick position. That's what it stands for. But it's really the same as this. And um, unlike using DS to allocate your own memory space, for using system addresses, I'm, I'm okay with using equal or this. I'll probably just use equal. What would that be? Eight. So, if you remember, this address store its stick position before it took three bytes. One for the instruction and two for the memory address. Now it only takes two bytes. One for the instruction and one for the uh, zero page memory location. And same thing here, when I load the accumulator, I'm loading it 
it only takes two bytes instead of three because I only need one byte for a zero page address. Now, the other thing that's important to note here is that this uh, load accumulator equates to AD in the instruction set. This load accumulator has the same name, load accumulator, but it has an A5. And the reason that this is different than this is if there's an AD, it says I'm expecting two byte address. This one says, hey, if it's A5, I'm only expecting a zero page address. And we're going to go to DDT. Again, 5025, uh, no, 50, it should be back to 5024 because I'm not allocating that memory space in my program anymore, right? So before I use that data space or data storage to allocate that one byte at 5024, I took that away now because I'm pointing at um, 3F. So I'm going to push down on the joystick. All right, so I got 13. I'm going to store that at 3F, and we're just going to come back to 5029 in a minute. There's my 13 stored away in zero page. And I expect this first one to fail. One, zero flag not set. And now the accumulator has a one. I'm expecting to get that 13 back. And I have the 13 back, and now I expect this to work. Branch on equal, and go get this. All right. But one more trick to show. Just like how they do it in, uh, what is it, uh, name that tune? <laughs> I can name that tune in... So before we had three bytes to store our variable, and then we did two bytes to store our variable. I'm going to show you how to do it in one byte. Whee! <laughs> now, until we jump down to stick center or stick left or st stick center, stick up, stick down, right? I'm not using the X register and I'm not using the Y register for anything. And nobody else is using them. This is my own program. So if you want to uh, have a super temporary variable, I'm just going to comment this out. If you want to have a super temporary variable, there's a new command that I, another new command besides and that I'm going to tell you about tonight. And that is... Uh, TAX, which says transfer the value of the accumulator into the X register. And just like there is a TAX, there's a TXA, which says load the contents of the X register back into the accumulator. So I'm going to make sure I got all these. Okay. So we load the accumulator with the value of stick zero. We transfer the value of the accumulator into the X register. That only takes one byte. So before, in the beginning, I had three bytes. Now I'm only using one byte. And then here, when I transfer X back to A, and then later, of course, X and Y are going to get overwritten, but I don't care by then because I'll have already figured out if the joystick is up or down. And again, down... All right, that was down or left. See right now, the Y has a zero, the X has a 255, this has a nine, 
So I'm going to transfer the accumulator into the X register. That has a 9. I expect this one to give me a 1 when I do the AND with 1. This is going to be 1. This won't be set. It's going to drop down and then transfer X back into A. So I have my 9 that I started with. And off we go again. So... There's three different ways you can do some variables. I would recommend you only do this in very small doses when you know exactly what's in X and what's in Y and you're not, uh, you know, and you don't need this for very long. Uh, oh, I guess I didn't totally comment that out. I would recommend using pay, uh, page zero Again, only if, you know, you're being super careful, right? And you're not using some some variable that's going to get uh, uh, some memory location that your system needs or is going to write to. Uh, but I figured uh, cassette end of flag, <laughs> you know, cassette end of record flag is a pretty safe place to steal one byte from the operating system. And then, of course, the last way is to do this, which says, hey, reserve a place in one space in memory to hold a byte for me. And then this is the, even though this takes up three bytes instead of all, you know, I could get it down to one. Uh, this is, this is going to be the most common way you're going to do variables is you're going to set aside some data space to stick your variables in. Uh, that's the safe way, right? That's totally under your control. So using the zero page can get dangerous and using the X and Y registers can get dangerous. This way is pretty safe, even if it takes up an extra couple bytes. But, oh, just one other thing I do want to show. with this version. I don't know if you remember from the last video, but the size of the program in our most optimized state was uh, from 5,000 to 5,023. So even using this uh, routine where I'm uh, using a variable in the and, I have only that only cost me four bytes over the totally optimized version. So, and I kind of like it better maybe than rotating right or left, just comparing bits with the and when I'm looking for specific bits. So, uh, but I mean even. At least I didn't do anything tonight to make the uh, computer crash. I mean, even this version where I'm using three byte instructions and storing an extra byte in space, uh, now the end is at 505C. So 572, <clears throat> uh, so even using my own, my own, creating my own variable and uh, storing to that variable and retrieving from that variable, 
it cost me nine bytes to do that. That's not too bad. All right. So, hey, I'm going to hit this video in exactly one hour time. I think that's great. And I think I covered a lot of stuff. Have a great night.